<laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back. I think we're back to factory settings today in terms of the video quality. So let me know if it looks normal again. I apologize. I will stop fiddling with the settings for a while. So I hate to be the one to break this to you guys, but um, we're halfway through the year. I'll give you a moment to let that soak in. <laughs> halfway through 2021 and that means that it is time for my mid-year fails, favorites, combo of videos. I always start with my fails. So these are just the products that disappointed me in the first half of this year. And it was actually really easy to select these things because they've lived at the top of my mind. There has just been a major like wheat from the chaff kind of delineation for me in the beginning of this year. There's been some really, really, really amazing products that have just been straight to the top. And then there have been like some epic fails. So it was not a difficult thing to decide. And I just want to repeat, this is a video of things I don't like. I've definitely gotten comments in the past where people are like, does she like anything? And I'm like, you're watching a regrets video. The next video is going to be all of the things that I loved so far this year. So that will be next. And then after that, we are still going to do a monthly favorites video. So it's just gonna be a week of roundups. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's go ahead and jump in. Yay, I feel like the, I feel like the quality is so much better. Okay, so. I don't know, in no particular order here. <laughs> so I always talk about how disappointment can be extra disappointing if your expectations were higher than like regular, you know? If you were above zero on expectation, you're like that much more disappointed. That's what happened with the Rowan sparkly glosses. So the Rowan original liquid lip balm formula is one of the most revolutionary things in my life. I know they were not the first necessarily to make that formula, that lovely, slippy, nourishing, glossy, but not sticky texture, but they were the first ones that I ever tried. And so they just live in this really happy place in my brain. And those first three colors that they came out with were so beautiful. And then they came out with sparkly ones, one of them being kind of a sparkly clear, and I was psyched. Now, Rowan got handed off, that's a nice way of putting it. Uh, Nikki, the original founder, who is the mastermind of all of the beautiful innovative formulas, is no longer with the company. And so this was one of the first releases-ish, I think, that, you know, was not her doing in any way. And it is not right. <laughs> it's just not right. It has a little bit of the same, you know, slip and feeling to it, but it somehow, and this is what I kept repeating in that video, they aren't really very shiny. You know, the glossy payoff just isn't really there as much as it is in the original ones. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but like there's also no glitter. It's almost like the shimmer that's in there is mattifying the formula somehow. And it's also, were the original ones minty? I think they were, they must have been, but this is just a placeholder. I did not like any of the shades. The clear was the least offensive, but still really sad because a clear glittery lip gloss is like a layup for me. But the other shades, one was kind of a pale pink that would either work on no one or be clear on most kind of thing. And so it was no reason to do both. And the other one was inexplicably like pumpkin orange, which is fine, looks great on some people, but like clear, almost clear pumpkin orange. Those were the only three shades. It just seemed a little bit strange to me and the formula just wasn't there. So this was a pass. Okay, the next is actually just a combo we're gonna knock out all at once. It was my first foray into trying the brand Nabla, a brand out of Italy. Again, higher than normal expectations and just that much more disappointed. So first it is the, oh no, Skin Realist. The little letters are speckled all over the package. Uh, the Skin Realist, or you could just turn it around where it's written very legibly. Skin Realist Foundation, this was supposed to be a really pretty like skin tint-ish foundation. It goes on so beautifully, but the wear time is non-existent. <laughs> it breaks up so fast. And I was getting to the point where I was in this blur of skin tints where I was like, everything is pretty good. You know, it doesn't seem to be that hard to formulate a fine skin tint, but this one sunk to the bottom because it was just heavy 
and too silicone-y or something and it never really wanted to set down. It never really wanted to like soak into my skin. You know, a Tatiism, does it sit on top of the skin and chunkify in her words or does it sink into your skin? This just didn't really seem like it wanted to be makeup on my face. Again, the wear time was just abysmal. And I was so sad about this because wow, the colorway. So this is the side-by-side -side nude palette, a colorway color story. The color story in this palette, I mean, it had me at hello when I saw it on Instagram and on other people's accounts. It's just so pretty and it leans cool, which is so uncommon. So I was very, very excited about this, but it just doesn't, it just doesn't cut it. The mattes are okay. The shimmers are really underwhelming. And again, wear time, it just wasn't there. For an eyeshadow, you really, like I am one of the people who gives the most leeway in terms of wear time on products because I'm like, eh, I'm really just not like a long wearing, like high expectations person necessarily. I'm not like, oh, it needs to be bulletproof and look exactly the same at the end of the day as when I put it on. But I mean, this is like, you could tell a difference in it creasing or just kind of disappearing while I'm filming the video, you know, it just, they just didn't stick to begin with. And it was so, so sad. I really wanted a really good go-to basics palette that leaned cool and the formula just isn't there. Another quick one that we can touch on. This is another formula that isn't there. This is the Blink Glow Getter Face Palette. They sent this to me. Blink makes a, like one of the original tubing mascaras and they actually came out with a new volumizing version of it that is like really, really hunky chunky for those people who like that kind of thing. And I think it really gets the job done, but this being, you know, maybe not their area of expertise. It just didn't cut it for me. The formulas are the best that I can describe it. They just feel like they're private labeled. You know, there's just something about it that feels very, mm, the trial makeup set that you get at Ulta, you know, for Christmas when you're 13. I'm sorry, Blank, I really am, but that's what I would describe it as. It's like, it's makeup. Full stop, like that's it. Um, and so as you're putting it on, you're like, I don't really, there's nothing nuanced about this formula. There's nothing nuanced about these colors. They're just pressed into the pan, you know, matte, whatever. Um, the uh, highlights are, again, just kind of glittery and flat. Um, so yeah, this was just a pass for me. This is one that I deliberated on for a very, very long time. And probably the one that I have tried the most out of anything in this entire selection today before making my final judgment on it. And it is the Ilia Blue Light Filter Protect and Set Mist. I wanted this to work so badly. Do I have mascara right there? I do, don't I? Don't want, I'm sorry, earth signs and Libras. This was part of my Sephora haul at the last sale. And I kind of wanted like a full W on that haul, as in it was all a win. This was the only thing that wasn't. This was the only thing that ruined my perfect record on that haul because everything that I got at the Sephora sale was a knock it out of the park home run besides this. This has good intentions. It's supposed to be blue light protecting, you know, whatever that necessarily means. I mean, hopefully it's going to help me not have as much pigmentation from staring at a computer all day or whatever, but it makes my makeup break up, which is the opposite of what a setting spray should be doing because they do call it a protect and set. And I don't have oily skin and I don't wear a whole lot of makeup, but when I would put this on, it would always part on my pores right here every single time. Um, and you know, I would only use it when I used powder. And that's kind of the whole point is that it would melt everything together, but it like melted too much. And I tried using so little, like so little. And the mist is lovely actually. So you can get away with using very little. It doesn't like go on in big globs on your skin. It had all of the makings of something really wonderful. I think it has sunscreen in it because it smells like sunscreen, which would make sense because, you know, blue light filter. Either way, it does not set my makeup. It makes it worse. <laughs> it makes it all just like on every single pore, it just goes ah, and opens up like all these little mouths in my makeup and it would happen instantly. So I knew it was this, like this was the culprit every single time. So Ilya blue light filter is a pass. All right, let's talk about a couple things here from Miss Keir Weiss. Uh, this is a placeholder because I literally cannot find 
that minuscule eyeshadow palette that I ordered from them and um, mostly because it's minuscule and that's probably one of the reasons that I don't like it. The other reason being, the bigger reason being, the formula is so mediocre. I guess that's the word. It's like aggressively mediocre. This is not that. I'll just stick a picture of it. This is great. I like this a lot. This is one of their blushes. And I did just make a whole nother Kierwise order uh, because they came out with um, little palettes. So I'm going to be trying that soon. Look forward to that. But the eyeshadow palette was a total pass. It broke a little bit as I was getting it out of its little paper package to put it in its compact. So I mean the teeny tiny amount of product that was in there to begin with then was diminished very expensive. The colors were meh. The pan is so small that the little lines that you have to get a brush in there, you can't even get your finger in one color without touching another color. So a brush is going to be that much more challenging to get like one succinct color. So I found it to be one of those things where like I almost never want to return something because this is my job. You know, it just is. I just kind of take the hits. But that was one of the ones where I was like, I feel like I got double crossed. This feels like a waste of my money. <laughs> I was really, really like frustrated with that little palette and um, all the reviews on the website. I mean, obviously they could easily be like curating them. All the reviews were like, oh, this formula is so exquisite. And oh, you know, it's precious, but all the colors are so uh, dialed in. And I was like, I am just not getting any of that from this. This is not a useful palette to me. It doesn't excite me. The formula is blah and the colors are blah. And I have like a, a a quarter of a teaspoon of each of them. It was just ridiculous. So uh, that was a pass. And then I actually pulled out the lipstick because I just need to make one sweeping PSA to the people formulating Kierwise. Stop putting the gross fragrance in everything. It is gross. It is a gross smell. It's gross. It smells like old makeup. It smells like old floral expired makeup, okay? And their new liquid foundation smells like that. I did not know that their lipstick was going to smell like that. And I truly love this packaging. This color is gorgeous. This is the shade Genuine, but it's like right underneath your nose when you're putting it on and you just don't want, it just, it's, it's yucky, okay? It's just a yucky smell and it's so unnecessary. You cannot tell me that putting a smell that is not good or at least is extremely polarizing, some people might love it, but a lot of people hate it, is like improving on that and that it's going to compromise the formula if you take it out, just take it out. It's so stupid. I would rather just smell like the ingredients. It just, ugh, it just ugh, it's gross. Okay, next we have two things from Milk Makeup. One, I have gone over this pretty recently when we did the one and done eyeshadows roundup, so I will not belabor this, but the color chalks I feel like are not different for a reason. They're kind of silly. They're greenwashed, I say, because, you know, they're in a little sleeve that is supposed to eliminate the need for any kind of pan packaging that you might be accustomed to for an eyeshadow. Pans are recyclable. And then also it comes in a little plastic tube. I just feel like it is ill-conceived and poorly executed and just, just silly. I think they're like $18 overpriced. And then the other thing is the Sunshine Skin Tint While This formula is fine. And some people really, really like it. This is another big hunk of plastic that is just a poor attempt at smoke and mirrors to make it seem like it is more eco-conscious because the capsule here, the, you know, the inner component, I don't even know how to get it out, is replaceable. And they said that that was some big improvement, but we're still talking about a big honking chunk of plastic. And this is also $42 for 0.54 fluid ounces of product. So for most, foundations, you know, we're talking about like the typology. This is a full ounce of product and depending on the exchange rate at any given time, this is between 25 and $30, comes in glass. It's totally brilliant, okay? And it's an absolutely lovely formula. Granted, not quite as many shades, not anywhere near as many shades, but they do do the full price for the first bottle, half price for the second bottle if you're between shades and want to mix to match, which I think is an elegant solution in the meantime. But this is just silly on every level to me and the formula isn't worth it. And I truly, 
don't like this delivery system. It is such a silly thing because it's not going to, it's a little glass ball and they call it their like signature glass ball, but it doesn't do anything to actually disperse the makeup well. It's not hygienic because like it's still rolling your skin bacteria back into there and like it's living in there. And the only way to dispense it is to like punch this and that puts more product onto the little roller ball but you would hope that the roller ball would then help dispense more product because that would be the point of a dispenser, but it doesn't. All it does is roll it around and then if you want more, you have to roll more out again. Yeah, this was not my fave. <laughs> and I think it's way overpriced and I also don't like when a company treats me like I'm an idiot and I'm, I'm just gonna take them at their word. Like, oh, this is eco-conscious because it has a replaceable cartridge um, when it is like so unnecessarily hunky chunky and plastic. Like you spent R&D dollars on what? Okay. I won all of the Amela palettes on a giveaway on Instagram. And I was very glad that I did because I was super, super excited about these. They have all the makings of something incredible. They are in four colorways and they all have kind of distinct personalities to them. There's a very warm one here that reminds me a lot of like the Aether Solstice palette. There's one that is like blues and silvers and stuff. It reminds me very much of the Wayne Goss, his second palette. I heard, oh, I'll that's not Topaz. I don't remember, but it's very, very pretty if those are your colors. There's one that's in these really, really wonderful like purples and blues. And then there's one that's like in uh, like cool tones. That's just like more nude, but, but cool. I was very, very excited about these because I could make use out of almost all of them. And so when I got them in my hands, I like couldn't get in there fast enough. What's unfortunate here is that just the, the payoff on these and the wear time is not good at all. And the colors, because it's a shame, I mean, it's, it's really a shame because the colors are actually really pretty, but that right there, like those shimmers, the payoff on those shimmers isn't really, I don't know, I mean, they're fine. They're fine, but it's not as good as Aether. It's not as good as PYT. It reminds me a lot of the PYT Warm palette. And as they sort of spread out, they like, they lose their luster really, really quickly. There's just not a lot of there there. And I know it's kind of hard to demonstrate that, but again, it's like that Nabla palette where you get a look and it's actually hard to get a look because the shadows don't seem to be really sticky enough to layer. So as you're trying to blend them, it's kind of knocking the last layer off <laughs> of the eyeshadow that you already have on your skin. Even with a primer, I was really, really desperate to make these work. And even if I got a look that I liked, it was a struggle, but if I got it, it wouldn't stick around for any amount of time. So it's like if I were to like put that foil on my eyelids and then try and blend like something into my crease, it would knock all of the shimmer back off and I'd be back where I started. So these were a pass for me, unfortunately. I do appreciate them sending them to me. You know, I want a giveaway, but um, I'm probably going to declutter all of them because there's no reason for me to have them. Okay, we are in the home stretch now, guys. So this is very, very recent. As you guys saw, this was, I think, my second to last video before filming this. These are the new EXA Light Show Color Melts. These were just a pass for me. They sting my eyes. That's a very personal thing. They have like some ingredient in them that I'm allergic to, which I don't know. I don't want to go on a tirade, get on my soapbox here, but they make such a big deal out of the ingredients being clean and not including 2,700 questionable ingredients. And I'm like, I think that the fact that there's still at least one questionable ingredient in there because it makes my eyes sting in water and obviously have a reaction means that there's no decided upon, agreed upon definition of clean and we need to, we need to move on. <laughs> we need to move on. So anyway, yeah, this is the shade Dream Phone, but it is just a placeholder for all of them. And it's not that I think that they are ugly. They're very pretty. It's just the fact that I think that other things exist that are that are 
fine that are better than this. And also I just don't love the way that they actually wear on my eyes when I did put them on. There's just not enough there there for me. I do feel like the formula is a little bit more like young and young at heart kind of looking. It's not necessarily a very mature makeup style. And so I guess that's kind of what they were going for. But as, I don't know, putting on my marketer hat as an initial follow-up to their groundbreaking foundation, the release for their foundation, this was just an odd choice. It was like they planted their feet firmly in the direction of, we are going to be a Glossier Me Too brand. <laughs> A Me Too brand being that they're not really doing anything different. They're just trying to create something that's, that already exists and just kind of be like, well, Me Too. And I guess that their differentiator is that it is clean, but it's not even clean for me. So yeah, I did. They sent these to me. I really, really appreciate that. I will obviously be interested in more things that they come out with, but this one was not for me. Another thing that, and I almost like, I just want to block it out, okay? Like it starts with an M. It's, it rhymes with carrot. Okay, and I am not technically, contractually allowed to even talk about them or mention their name or use their products or else they own my content. So <laughs> we're just going to pretend that this is called Carrot Cosmetics and they put out a tubing mascara and it doesn't tube, bam, doesn't tube. It's a pretty mascara. It really is it's in a really, really pretty component and everything, um, but it just flakes off just like anything else. So uh, yeah. As far as the tubing mascara claim goes, I don't understand. It's very expensive. It didn't work for me. And last, but certainly not least, I am not going to belabor this one either. You guys know how I feel about the Violette FR Yuch, Yuch paints, the eye paints. The glitters are fine. I don't totally love the shades that I got, but as toppers, they're fine. This being the matte, it is hands down, the most difficult liquid eyeshadow formula that I have ever used because it just keeps going and going and going, okay? It just keeps going and going and going and going. And that was just a dot of product that might be appealing to some. I found it super aggravating. And that doesn't mean that it's impossible to use. My original point was it is sold as simple, easy, effortless French girl vibes. And it made me feel like I did not know what to do with makeup. It made me feel like my skills were just horrible, you know? So yes, those were a pass for me. And I consider myself very lucky to be surrounded by a, an absolute wealth of products. And I think that was what, 12, 13 products, something like that. And those are the ones that just abjectly disappointed me for the first half of this year. We try so much makeup on this channel and for that to be the amount of products that actually were like just wholesale not good, in my opinion, that's a, that's a pretty darn good margin, okay? So um, I consider myself very, very lucky and I am so grateful every single day that this gets to be my job, that I get to share these things with you guys and to help either uh, share my passion or save you money, whatever happens to be the flavor of the day. And uh, I really appreciate you guys being here along for the ride. So if you did find this valuable, do give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, remember there are the, you know, more rounds Roundups coming up this week. Definitely hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today, guys. I love you so much, and I will see you in the next one.